Yeah, so I just dropped out. <laughs> I was honestly so, so busy and I was in, had to be in, you know, four different states in a week and I was flying and traveling. There was no way I could get school done. So I had to apply for a special thing just to let them know that I was fully, fully and full-time employed and making a certain amount of money so that they could uh, drop me out of school. Um, just opening acts. I feel like they're so much fun because mm -hmm. you're performing to a crowd that has no idea who you are. Or like very you few. Win them over. Exactly. Yeah. So you really have to like work like work and, and, and try and get them to understand you and have a good time. So it's good fun. It's always a good challenge. Depression and suicide wasn't a real thing for me mm. until I'd actually been through it. Like I could mm. never understand how someone could take their own life until I'd actually been through those feelings. And I felt like it was just important for me to be able to use the platform that I do to express how real it is and how important mental health is and how it just gets slipped under the mat sometimes and people don't pay too much attention to it. And I just wanted to use my following just to spread awareness and to tell people that if they're not feeling okay, that they can talk to someone and that eventually they will be okay. So I walk to I'm here with Jai Whitford. How you guys doing? <laughs> so you were born in Campbelltown, is that you say? Yes. Oh, you done your research. <laughs> Damn, yeah, Campbelltown. And Sydney. are your parents originally from Sydney as well, or? Yeah, both born and raised in Sydney. Mum was born in Campbelltown, where I'm from, and my dad was raised a little bit more west, so like an hour away from Campbelltown, mm -hmm. but not far. What did they do, or your careers? their careers when you were growing up? Uh, my dad is an IT, he does all the programming and stuff for Nestle. Um, and my mom does accounting, so she does oh. that. Oh, yeah. but your dad's like a musician and his grandparents and your uncle are yeah, all yeah, musicians. Yeah, 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 so they all like sing and play musical instruments and stuff. But um, on my mom's side, it's pretty like, pretty obscure to them. But my dad's always been a muso, so yeah, it's mm -hmm. good. What kind of music did your parents play in the house when you were growing up? Um, they loved, their favorite band was um, Creators Clearwater Revival. I don't know if you know who they are. <laughs> They're like a rock band. Yeah. Um, so they loved like a lot of like rock, like pop rock stuff. But now, my dad told this is the same music that I do now. He came over to Australia just recently and he was playing his playlist. And I was like, damn, I was like, I listen to this shit. And he was... Really? He listens to like the yeah. current Yeah, I was music. like, how do you know who Travis Scott is? <laughs> Oh my gosh, my parents would have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> How do you describe your personality back then growing up? My personality yeah. or theirs? Yours. Mine. Um, I feel like my whole life so far I've been pretty, like, easygoing, pretty happy, pretty chilled. Nothing really stresses me out in life mm -hmm. to this day. Um, and yeah, just like fun. I always wanted to muck around. I was never any good in school. I just didn't want to be there. I had like a group of friends and I would never listen. Um, it's sort of, you know, <laughs> it was pretty rebellious as in high school, but um, now I suppose I'm a little bit more composed and focusing on my music and doing what I have to do, and we're out here in LA <laughs> doing our thing, but yeah, it's been good. Do you remember who you first listened to when you found music yourself? Um, I loved, I loved Chris Brown. He was like, I loved him musically. He was like one of my idols. I loved the music he made. I had a, um, we have this thing called Sing Star in Australia. Have you heard of it? It's like a karaoke no. box that you plug into your TV. <laughs> yeah, and you can like sing along. And Chris Brown was probably one of the first people that I used to sing along with. But I mean like Usher, Michael Jackson, uh, Stevie Wonder, um, Tupac. I grew up with a bunch of bunch of cool music around me. But, um, but yeah, I feel like my music sort of stemmed from something within me and, and my dad and we sort of just worked on it and he would walk around singing stuff and I would walk around singing <laughs> stuff. Yeah, it was just, it was cute. Which of your parents are you more similar to? I Probably my mom because I grew up with my mom. Mm -hmm. I feel like she raised me. My dad left when I was like two so he wasn't around. But um, my mom definitely raised me and made me the person that I am today. So I would say definitely my mom but I feel like me and my dad have similar interests. You know, he played rugby, I played rugby. He was a musician. I make music, so I feel like, in terms of activities, but if like personality, I feel like I'm more like my mom. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you have siblings as well? Yeah, I have a, I have a baby sister and a baby brother. Mm -hmm. They're the cutest, they're the best. Was it difficult for your mom, like, raising all of you guys? Um, not really, I feel like 
It was pretty chill. I think she's she's a weapon. Mm -hmm. She's really really pro. And my dad had the kids to another woman, so it was just me. But um, but I feel like we got along really well. She was the best. You know, she taught me what to value and what not to value and how to be. And I feel like without her, I feel like I wouldn't have the mind that I do now. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Or did you like school growing up? I loved school. I love school so much. I think um, school is definitely, but for me, school is like a socializing thing. You know what I mean? Like I went to like hang out with my friends and 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 um, you know go and muck around. Like I wasn't really there to learn, but um, I'm glad that I went. I think I made some of. The I still talk to my high school friends to this day. We hang out all the time, so I'm very grateful mm -hmm. for going to such a cool high school. <laughs> At what age did it click to you that you had a voice? Or did you already, from the onset, like, singing just came super natural? Yeah, it was pretty natural. I think I just enjoyed making music, and you know, it was something that I loved doing, and, you know, I think it was, it was for me, it was more of a hobby. Um, and then, at a young age, I got signed, I was signed at 14, and it sort of became more of a profession than, than just a hobby, and I started making money off it, and I was super... I realized that I had an opportunity to do something that I'd always loved, but also make a living off it. And since then, I've just been working as hard as I can to try and get somewhere and figure out who I want to be as a person and as a musician. And yeah. Was X Factor something that your mom wanted you to participate in, or? How she, did it? <laughs> she had no idea. I literally, I was telling this to someone before. I, I just went and told her. I said, "Mom, I'm going to audition for X Factor," and she laughed at me. And I said, "No, for like for real." I was like, "I need you to sign this." <laughs> I was Consent. wondering. Yeah, and she was like, "Okay." And then it sort of just, you know, took off from there. That's how it happened. Do you know anyone before that in the music industry? Um, not really, to be honest with you. I went to a musical high school, so I went to performing arts oh, high wow. school. Um, but within the music industry, nah, not at all. I didn't know anyone. I sort of, you know, it was a, such a strange world to me because I got introduced to the professional music industry at such a young age, so to try and be taken seriously and to try and make a name for them was hard, but... Um, yeah, I feel like we're doing a good job now, and I'm working hard still. Mm -hmm. Did you have any mentors back then, like even when you were on the show, like teaching you how to sing or teaching you how to? Yeah, I did. I had a really good friend. His name was Morris, um, Morris June, and he helped me a lot. He just taught me more the confidence side of things and the music and how to hold myself and how to carry myself in what I do, and um, and sort of gave me the urge to want to share that with people. I feel like, um, because I was nervous, like I used to get so nervous performing in front of people. I um, mean, he helped me a lot just to show that it's a craft and it's a talent and to be able to share that with people is a blessing, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Alongside the show, did you already have like labels reaching out to you? Because like even in your audition, um, mm. they knew that you already made your own music. So, yeah. Like, you were, when you were like sending your application, you were yeah. like, okay, this is also A little song. bit. I had a couple like... A couple like management teams and no, not so much. Like I have one label, but there was no one, no one major. But again, to me, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what a contract was or what terms were right or anything. So I was just so like blind to all that sort of stuff. And I was just trying to have a, a good time and make the most of the opportunity. And um, and yeah. Mhm. Mm and after that, like, what happened? Did like Sony immediately approach you or? So it's part of the deal. So once you, once you're an X Factor. Um, if you make it to a certain point, then they're allowed to sign you. So mm -hmm. at the start of the show, you sign a contract saying that, um, you know, once the show's done, if they want to, they want to sign you, then that's then, you know, you just go along with it, which mm -hmm. is good. And I was lucky enough to get picked, and that was signed. And since then, we've been working. And did your mom help you with the contracts or anything, or did she yeah. mentor you in a business way? Yeah, she did. I mean, she does accounting, so she managed all my money. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, at the start, yeah. It sort of taught me. So I do most of my accounts and stuff now. Um, with her help, um, which is good for me because I, I can understand the business side of things. But again, she'd never seen a label contract before or anything yeah. like that, so it was quite scary to us. But luckily, Sony have looked after me and been amazing, and I feel like we're here now because Sony got it there. Yeah. Represent. <laughs> Back then, was it difficult? <laughs> um, it was a little bit hard. I think it was a bit tough. Um, but again, I was only 14 years old, so I didn't understand. So my me being so naive sort of protected me from being scared of, of what might happen, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I wasn't so scared of the consequences or what I was signing because I literally didn't know. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, that protected me a lot, but 
over the years I've learned yeah. a lot about that side of things in the business and honestly the business side of it is, is just as hard as the creative side if not yeah. harder because you know you need to get people on board and get people to believe in you as much as you do. Mm -hmm. And back then when you were releasing music, because you're already writing all this yourself or were you, were they giving you music as well? No, I've always written all my stuff. That was one thing that I was stuck, stuck by. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to be a true artist and make sure that I was writing the music that I was releasing and that I was happy with it. And I feel like I've always stuck by that. Mm -hmm. And was it difficult for you, like going into sessions at such a young age, yeah. like, working with producers? Like, how did you even learn how to do all that? That was so hard. I feel like being 15, 14, 14 or 15 years old, walking into a, a writing room with people who are double your age, who have yeah. been in the music industry for 10 years, and I've got their like craft for nest. You know that was super hard for me because I almost had like a point to prove, and I had to learn how to stand on my own feet at such a young age. But um, it was good though, I feel like it pushed me because I didn't have a choice, you know, like it's one of those, it's sink or swim, like you, know, you just have to learn how to do it on the fly and I felt like the people around me and my label were really supportive and sort of just got it, got mm -hmm. it done and learnt on the fly. Yeah, and then um, did you start going homeschooled or how was it with school at that point? <laughs> yeah, so I just dropped out. <laughs> I, I was honestly so, so busy and I was in had to be in you know four different states in a week and I was flying and traveling there was no way I could get school done so I had to apply for a special thing just to let them know that I was fully fully and full time employed and making a certain amount of money so that they could uh, drop me out of school and I did that and I did just online schooling for my own uh, benefit for two years just so that I felt like I wasn't <laughs> yeah. you know, a vegetable and that I could still learn <laughs> um, but yeah I'm glad I did because I feel like it made me appreciate um, how important education is and how important it is to stay healthy in your mind and know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And what cl clicked you to put out more YouTube videos and share more about your personal side? Was that re uh, more recent or...? Yeah, that was more recent. I think, I feel like I went through like a pretty, a pretty shitty phase where I felt like I didn't really serve a purpose in my life. Like I felt like you know, there was an opportunity that came and I feel like it had gone. Like, I feel like it, it, it was a long four years of me, like, grinding at the mm -hmm. music scene and not getting anywhere. But then I realized that those dramas were personal and that I, I was the one who was restricting myself from being successful because I felt like more stuff should have been given instead of me having to work for that. But I understand now how hard you have to work for, for, for what you want these days and how persistent you have to be. And um, I'm happy with where I am. I feel yeah. like now I understand what it takes and I've been working hard. Mm -hmm. And on the flip side of that, do you worry about being more of a like a social influencer than a musician now? Because yeah. I feel like you went the other way, like you're into music, then you went yeah. to YouTube, whereas most people are like YouTube then straight into it. Yeah, so I feel, like, um, I feel like social media nowadays is so important for the exposure of your music. Mm -hmm. But again, I feel like maybe, I mean it's not bad, but I feel like maybe I went too far there into the social side because I started getting all these followers and YouTube subscribers and I became more of a social influencer than a musician. Mm -hmm. So when I would go to my concerts and stuff, we'd sell out shows, but no one there knew my music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. So it was, quite a, it was quite a difficult situation to be in. But I feel like uh, over time and, and me making a few decisions and really dedicating myself to my music and making sure that the music I'm putting out is cool and represents who I am, I feel like that shifts. And now a lot more people know me for my music instead of the uh, Jai you know, mm -hmm. the person that, that I am. And for your more recent songs, you started working with a select team, right, of producers. Yeah. How did you meet those people? Just through the, just through the yeah. industry, I think. I had a session set up with a guy named James Angus. Um, he's the man. I feel like he he is probably one of the sole reasons or one of, one of two or three producers um, that helped me discover my sound, but also give me the confidence to pursue that. I feel like in the industry, I feel like you can make a lot of music and just because it doesn't get feedback doesn't mean that you should stop making that sort of music, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like he gave me the confidence and, and the, the will to want to make music and persist with that, so I feel like we've turned a little bit more urban and we're making a little bit more cool, like R&B, urban, hip-hop stuff, and I feel like he'd given me the confidence and the will to be able to pursue that. Mm -hmm. What's the inspiration behind Honestly? Inspiration behind Honestly? Mm -hmm. um, that was a collaborative project with a rapper named Camouflage Rose. And again, he's helped me a lot. I feel like we clicked on more than a musical level. Like, he's a really cool dude and we just spent time hanging out. 
And it was his concept. He was the one who came up with the concept of the song, and it's pretty much just about getting to the point in a relationship in which you're trying to decide whether it's something you want to commit to or move on from, and you know, really deciding whether you dedicate yourself to that person or or not. Um, I feel like everyone gets to that point in a relationship where you're like, mm, is this something I want to do? Like, it's been a year now. Mm -hmm. You know, you're trying to move out. You're trying to, like, you know, get, you know there's <laughs> decisions you have to make and mm -hmm. decide whether you want to commit to that person. So it's just about that, like, mental process and being able to decide that. Mm -hmm. Actually, what's the inspiration behind your music videos? I feel like there's always a similar theme with yeah, a right. single girl. Yeah. I want you and a girl. Yeah, so it's just usually trying to tell the story. I feel like I like, I love, like, the cinematic, like, music videos. Like, I always, like, draw inspiration from a movie or mm -hmm. from like a book or from a story or something and then try and reflect that into into the video um but yeah i always have fun coming up with the creatives <laughs> those sorts of things. it's cool and how did you get into acting with the neighbors um that was just like a off the cuff thing i was signed to an acting agency oh when was that ages ago when i was again when i got signed i was like probably like 14 when i signed with them and nothing really happened because I was doing my music all the time, I was quite busy with music. And then one day I had some time off and I had like six months break and my agency was like, hey, we have a role for you, like, would you like to be involved? And I was like, sure. I was like, it was cool, I had good fun, it was a good learning curve. I feel like it was hard. We shot two episodes a day, so it was like, boom, 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 like really fast paced, fast moving, fast shooting show. But um, I learned a lot, I feel like it gave me good experience in the acting scene. Do you see yourself getting more into the acting now, or not for? Yeah, it could be cool. I feel yeah. like acting's cool. Acting's fun. It's e like I'm not easy. It's hard. Like, I feel like I suck at acting. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I'm horrible at it. But I mean, in the sense that once you have a role, like it's set. Like your your income and like your what you're doing for the next six months is set. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it's just it's a good sense of confidence. Um, I feel like it's sort of just off the cuff thing. But I mean, I I do it again mm -hmm. for sure. And how did your tour with little mix come about? You've done a few of those, like yeah. That was yeah. through the label. They came through. They pulled through hard on that. We did one with Selena. We did one with Little Mix. Um, just opening acts. I feel like they're so much fun because mm -hmm. you're performing to a crowd that has no idea who you are, or like very you have few. To win no, them over. Exactly. Yeah. So you really have to like work, like work and, and and try and get them to understand you and have a good time. So it's good fun. It's always a good challenge. Mm -hmm. And are you gonna put out like an extended EP or album? Soon? Yeah. So we got an EP coming out. Um, the tracks are just getting mastered now, so in the final stages. We just um, shot some really cool video content for them. Um, and I'm excited because I feel like it's the first body of work that I've been able to put out and like stand back and be like, it represents what I want it to, mm -hmm. um, essentially. So I'm excited. And what's the inspiration like behind that, like the lyrics? To be honest, it was just a musical journey. Like we were just, me and James were just getting in the studio, he produced the whole thing. Um, and we'll just have fun and just make music and just write tunes that we felt were cool and, and, and see what we could do and um, yeah we had a good time and mm -hmm. I feel like for me it was more about the musical sonic side of things in the story like eventually I want to put out an EP that like tells like an overall story yeah. of my life but I feel like right now it's just like transferring people from um, who I was to who I am now musically mm -hmm. yeah what are the inspirations behind your tattoos? My tattoos? Yeah. All my tattoos are biblical. Yeah. So they all have like biblical representations. So one of my chests is Daniel in the lion's den, which represents strength against those who may come against me. So I have to know the stories of the Bible to understand them. Yeah. But if people have the time, then I usually explain them. But a lot of the time, people are just like, yeah, cool, man, whatever. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, they're all biblical. So they all represent something to me, something to me. And they just daily reminders of how I feel like I should live my life. And, what I value. Mm -hmm. And you actually grew up with a like religious upbringing, right? Yeah. So I went to a Christian primary school um, and built a relationship with God and loved it. I feel like it helped me a lot. It still helps me to this day in my life and I feel like I live by a lot of things that I learned when I was a kid and it just allows me to be open-minded mm -hmm. and, and free. I feel like I don't really stress about anything too much. If I do, then I just remind myself that all for a purpose and that we're here and it's gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. And actually you, you like recently put out a, a video about um, like our mental health yeah. and the difficulties with that. Yeah. Can you elaborate on it? Yeah, so I was, quite frankly, I got really depressed um, probably a year ago and I just wasn't having it. I didn't know why, I didn't know what was going on. I couldn't understand why I was feeling that way. Um, and I sort of pulled through it with the help of my girlfriend and my family and stuff. And I just felt like it, depression and suicide wasn't 
a real thing for me until I'd actually been through it. Like I could mm. never understand how someone could take their own life until I'd actually been through those feelings. And I felt like it was just important for me to be able to use the platform that I do to express how real it is and how important mental health is and how it just gets slipped under the mat sometimes and people don't pay too much attention to it. And I just wanted to use my following just to spread awareness and to tell people that if they're not feeling okay that they can talk to someone and that eventually they will be okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And outside of that, like, what kind of advice do you have for people who are going through depression? Me, the way I looked at it is I thought life is long. Like, mm. a lot of people say life's short, but when you're depressed like that, sometimes life can just feel so long and stressful and, like, you don't really have a purpose. And, again, that's sort of what made me realize that things were going to be okay. You know, I had a really shit 12 months of my life, but then... I still had the rest of my life to live and I felt like if I'd given up in that 12 months then I would have never been able to experience that or be here um, to live through that. So I'm glad that I did. Just hang in there, find someone to talk to. Um, you'll be okay. Find what makes you happy and focus on the things that you can control. That helped me a lot. I used to stress about stuff that I had really had no control over. I used to think about things that ultimately I couldn't change. So once I let those things go, and focused on the things that I could control and that I could affect in my life, then my happiness slowly started to come back through just small things. Mm -hmm. And how would you say the music you've made has changed compared to the early, early songs you made? I mean, for one, I feel like I know a little bit more about what I'm doing. I mean, <laughs> I've spent time, you know, working on it and finessing what I do and my songwriting and production techniques and stuff, and I feel like when I'm in the studio now, I can confidently know what music's gonna come out of it. Mm -hmm. And know that it's just a matter of time and working and hard work and persistence. Um, I feel like when I was younger, I was just sort of like, hey guys, <laughs> I'm here, like, you know what I mean? So I feel like now I know a little bit more about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Outside of depression, what would you say have been your biggest challenges so far in life? Um, probably, Probably the inconsistency of what I do. Mm, that yeah. is really hard. I feel like knowing that the music industry changes so much and knowing that it could work one day and then not work the next day or knowing that today it could be the most successful that I'll ever be. It's so hard sometimes to come to terms with. But then again, I feel like I've learned to flip that on its head and make it the opposite and learn that this is an opportunity and that maybe this is just a step to where I could be and if I'm willing to put in the work and if I'm willing to put in the time then this could be so much more. What does love mean to you? What does love mean to me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel like love is a connection mm. to something or someone that only you know the true content of okay. I feel like to be in love with someone no one could sit there and compare a relationship and say that it was the same you know what I mean mm -hmm. like the way you love someone the way I love someone is completely different yeah you know what I mean so I feel like it's a very personal feeling and connection and I feel like it's almost if you truly love someone then that'll never change like if you love someone the way you love your mom you might get angry at them or get upset with them but Deep down, you'll always have a place in your heart for that person, and I feel like, yeah, mm -hmm. that was cool. That was important. <laughs> special. What do you love about Isabel's personality? About my girlfriend's personality? Yeah. Um, probably her quirkiness. I feel like I'm, I'm a bit quirky and a bit weird as well, and I feel like it's hard to connect with someone on that level. I feel like at the start of your relationship, mm -hmm. you're always like the best version of yourself, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're always like, <laughs> you're always, um, you always dress good, you always look good, you always try and, you know, be <laughs> mm -hmm. the best version of yourself. And I feel like it's scary once you get into a relationship and you start to let those walls down that that other person isn't going to, you know, isn't going to gel. But I feel like we just clicked really well and she's an amazing person. She makes me happy, she makes me laugh. She makes, she's probably the only person in the world that makes me laugh more than I make myself. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> And what's like to you to have such a public relationship, like on social media? <laughs> to be honest, sometimes that's a mistake. Like having a public relationship is so hard sometimes because it gives people 
the immediate access to say whatever they want about your relationship. Like, I've literally been like with my girlfriend, laying next to her, and she's gonna message me like, hey, I'm with your boyfriend. <laughs> like, people just have so much input on a relationship that isn't needed. I feel like we sort of messed it up a little bit, but again, like, I love it. I think it's cool that you, you can share that on social media and share with my friends and family. I have family that live overseas and just be able to let them see what we're getting up to and what we're doing and stuff every day is cool. I feel like they're not missing out and they get to know her and get to know me a bit more as well. Last question, what do you want to be remembered for? What do I want to be remembered for? Um, my music, I think 100%. Mm -hmm. I feel like being able to spread a positive message on the industry and I feel like the world is so fickle these days and it's so competitive. I dream of the day when musical artists can all work together for their success, you know what I mean? I feel mm -hmm. like so many people are trying to cut each other down now and trying to start banter and start beef just to get attention. I feel like it's not necessary or worth it. I feel like if people could just work for each other, and if people could unite, I feel like it'd make a lot of people's lives a lot easier. Yeah, I love this. This is awesome. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. <laughs>